You might think that the golden age of exploration is over. Mankind has conquered every continent and traveled to the most remote parts of the globe. You can even get Wi-Fi in many of those places now. And besides, if you can just look on Google Maps, why bother to hike through jungles or snowy wastelands? Well, adventurers still exist. And while their journeys are different now, they're no less perilous or daring. Here are 10 of the most extreme explorers who've risked it all in search for adventure. Amazing. Number 10, Ross Edgley. Ross Edgley is a fitness champ and record-holding swimmer. In 2018, he became the first person to swim around the whole of mainland Britain. The journey took him 157 days and he spent an average of 12 hours swimming every day. This grueling task took its toll on his body. He suffered from extreme chafing that led to an open wound that fused to his pillow as he slept, having to be peeled off, causing agonizing pain. He also endured jellyfish attacks when a stinging jellyfish wrapped itself round his goggles during three hours of tough swimming. It had stung him so badly that his face swelled up, preventing his goggles from fitting. The only option he had to put his goggles back on was to punch them into his swollen eye sockets. But the worst thing he suffered from was salt mouth, a gruesome condition where exposure to salt water rotted the inside of his mouth, at one point causing chunks of his tongue to fall off. Ross swam with whales, sharks, and seals and had to consume between 10 and 15,000 calories per day to give his body enough fuel. But despite his hardships, Ross broke three world records and has plans for another expedition soon. Phew. Number 9. Ed Stafford Next up is another feat of endurance from an Englishman with too much time on his hands. In 2010, Ed Stafford became the first person to ever walk the length of the Amazon, a total of 4,490 miles across South America, coast to coast. His adventure took two years, four months, and eight days to complete and took him through some of the wildest and most inhospitable jungles on Earth. During the course of his trip, he fought off poisonous snakes and escaped death threats from indigenous tribes of Amerindians. At one point, Ed and his guide Cho had been walking for a month without seeing a single human and had to walk another week to find the nearest village on their map. Having calculated they had only 450 calories a day to survive on, they plowed ahead through thick terrain. But when they arrived, there was no village. Lost, hungry, and with a broken GPS, Ed and his guide survived only by eating tortoise meat. Number 8. Alex Honnold Free solo climbing is a sport whose history is littered with death. These climbers ascend sheer rock faces and mountain cliffs with no ropes, no harnesses, and no equipment. With just their hands and feet, these daredevil athletes risk everything for the rush of climbing higher and faster than ever before. They know that one mistake, one false step, would mean certain death. Alex Honnold is perhaps the greatest living free solo climber, and in 2017 he climbed the infamous El Capitan in Yosemite National Park, a feat chronicled in the film Free Solo. A giant vertical rock formation 3,000 feet tall, El Capitan is possibly the most famous rock face for climbers and is well known as a grueling and unforgiving challenge. And that's with safety ropes. But even El Cap's sheer granite face and unpredictable weather didn't stop Honnold completing the challenge in just under four hours. But it was no walk in the park. While halfway up and pinned against a tiny ledge staring down into the abyss, Honnold had a panic attack. Only deep breathing and rock solid mental resilience allowed him to overcome his fears and keep climbing. When asked how he managed to make it to the top, Alex simply replied, Do you accept the fact that if anything goes wrong, you die? That's it. Number 7. Jessica Watson So far, you might be forgiven for thinking the world of extreme exploration is a boys club, but this next adventure definitely proves that idea wrong. Jessica Watson sailed a 10-meter boat around the world on her own at the age of just 16. She sailed almost 23,000 nautical miles across some of the most dangerous stretches of the ocean on Earth, passing Cape Horn, Cape Agulhas, Cape Leeuwin, and the Cape of Tasmania. While at sea, she battled 12-meter high waves, had her boat knocked down by 70-mile-an-hour winds, and was forced to repair her vessel or face a watery end in the far reaches of the Southern Ocean. Her journey took her six months to complete, and she was awarded several medals and awards for bravery in her home country of Australia. When the LA times asked her why she embarked on such a lonely and dangerous voyage, Watson replied she wanted to challenge what people thought a little girl was capable of. Number 6. David de Rothschild 
Since Victorian times, being a career explorer has been an occupation for the extremely wealthy. Well, how else are you going to afford all that survival gear? This tradition continues today with David D. Rothschild, son of the mega-rich banking family, regularly going on dangerous expeditions to far-flung corners of the earth. His hobby mirrors that of Michael Rockefeller, another son of a wealthy banking family who traveled to Papua New Guinea to study remote tribes. Although his body was never recovered, it is thought that Michael was killed and eaten by the Asmat tribe in 1961. David the Rothschild, however, has been luckier, so far, and has used his wealth to highlight ecological problems such as plastic pollution in the sea. To do so, he built a catamaran out of plastic bottles and sailed to so-called Plastic Island, the giant floating island of waste plastic in the Pacific, which is currently three times the size of France and growing. De Rothschild calls himself an eco-explorer and has certainly taken lots of risks to spread his message of environmental activism. But with his family still investing in oil and big polluting corporations, what if he's just helping to clean up the mess his parents and grandparents helped finance? Number 5. Alan Eustace Everyone's heard of Felix Baumgartner, the daredevil skydiver who jumped to Earth from a balloon high in the stratosphere in 2012. But did you know he no longer holds the record for highest altitude freefall jump? Yep, that prestigious title now belongs to Alan Eustace, the greatest explorer you've never heard of. Eustace is not your average adventurer. In fact, he's more of a retired computer scientist. As an ex-vice president of Google, Eustace is far more motivated by solving difficult engineering problems than he is by fame or money. And so Eustace self-funded a team of scientists to devise a new way of diving from the upper atmosphere. Their design involved no basket or capsule, but a cleverly engineered protective suit that simply needed to be unhooked from the balloon. Alan Eustace and his team deliberately avoided all media attention and their project was worked on under strict secrecy. That is, of course, until the day he attached himself to a balloon over New Mexico and floated 25 miles up into the air, three times higher than a commercial aircraft, and a full mile higher than Baumgartner. His descent lasted almost four and a half minutes, and he reached speeds exceeding 822 miles per hour. Eustace's greatest reward for his amazing feat of atmosphere exploration was the knowledge his record-breaking suit might one day help people survive re-entry from space missions. Number four, Eric Larson. Eric Larson is another classic explorer, whose accomplishments prove the golden age of exploration isn't quite dead yet. Larson is the only man in history to complete the polar trifecta, reaching the North Pole, South Pole, and summit of Mount Everest in the same year. He's braved whiteouts in Antarctica and avoided giant avalanches on the slopes of the Himalayas. Larson has said he doesn't want to be the first person to visit these places, but the last, before climate change changes them forever. To do this, he traveled to the Arctic in the summer, something never attempted before because as the ice melts, it becomes incredibly unstable and dangerous. Larson has recounted terrifying anecdotes from his trip about traveling along thinning ice that cracked underneath him and being woken up in the middle of the night by gaping holes of icy water opening up near where they slept. Larson hopes his journeys will help teach people about the environment, a cause he cares enough about to put himself in frighteningly risky situations. Number three, Jeff Mackley. Jeff Mackley describes himself as a filmmaker, an explorer, and an idiot. As a journalist committed to getting never-before-seen shots of dangerous events, he's photographed more than 70 deadly natural disasters, from tsunamis and Category 5 hurricanes and forest fires. He began his career chasing storms, traveling the world to put himself in the path of some of nature's most terrifying natural events. But perhaps the highlight of his career was when he and his team upsailed 500 yards into a live volcano. Having planned the trip for 10 years, Mackley chose Marum Volcano in the remote South Pacific and wearing a protective silver suit and equipped with oxygen tanks, ventured 100 yards from the lava. Mackley has almost killed himself several times, but had a real close shave in that volcano. While within meters of the churning pit of lava, a spurt of magma bubbled up and out, landing near him. At over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, being splashed would have certainly meant death. While his footage has been hailed as the greatest video ever captured of an active volcano, he could have had even more impressive first-person angles had his head-mounted GoPro not burst into flames. Number 2. James Balag In a world threatened by climate change, it's more important than ever for adventurers to be aware of the world they are exploring. 
James Balag is one such man, an explorer, scientist, and artist, who has spent decades documenting changes to the world's ice sheets. Balag founded the Extreme Ice Survey, a group that aims to publicize the effects of climate change by creating powerful documentary footage. On an expedition to the Arctic, Balag and his team set up complex networks of time-lapse cameras and left them there for years. They camped in the Arctic for months working on their film, experiencing terrible hardships and health complications from the cold, but when they caught a huge climate event in Greenland, it made it all worthwhile. Balag saw and filmed the biggest ice shelf calving ever captured on camera. This was when an iceberg the size of Manhattan broke away from the ice shelf into the sea. The glacier was several times the height of a skyscraper and weighed many millions of tons. Balag's journey shined a light on the huge changes happening in our world that we would never otherwise see. Number 1. John Allen Chow John Allen Chow was a young missionary from Vancouver who traveled to North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal, about halfway between India and the west coast of Burma. North Sentinel is incredibly remote and home to one of the last remaining groups of uncontacted indigenous peoples. The inhabitants of North Sentinel are the direct descendants of the first humans to migrate out of Africa some two million years ago. Unlike most remote tribes, the Sentinelese aggressively resist outsiders and have a history of killing visitors or fishermen who stray too close to their island. Even helicopters that have flown above the island have been met with volleys of arrows. Visitors are strictly banned from the island, not just for their own safety, but because they could easily introduce diseases that the islanders have no natural immunity to. But none of this deterred John Chow, a committed Christian missionary who was determined to convert them to Christianity. His social media accounts showed he knew visiting the island was illegal and he understood the danger he was putting himself in. But still, he pressed on to what he described as Satan's last stronghold, a pagan backwater that needed the salvation of Christ. But unfortunately, the islanders didn't agree. When John Chow first paddled out to the island from a small fishing vessel, he tried to communicate with the islanders, shouting that Jesus loves them and singing Christian songs. On his first visit to the island, he survived when an arrow fired at him pierced his waterproof Bible, but was somehow not deterred by it. He went back soon after, determined to get his message through to the natives. Unfortunately for Chow, and the word of God, he was killed as soon as he set foot on dry land. Reports tell a story of a gruesome death. The fishermen saw him shot with arrows and his body dragged away by a rope round his neck. The authorities are currently wondering how on earth to get his body back. That kind of mission could easily end up in disaster. But there are two sides to this story and it's very possible Chow could have harmed the tribe by infecting them with foreign diseases, like a cold or infection they have no defense against. If North Sentinel Island intrigues you, then check out this other video we made about the strange island and its fascinating, brutal history. Click the video on screen now. Also, let me know in the comments if you think John Chow was brave or just foolish. And is there still a place for explorers in the 21st century? Thanks for watching.